Hey, this is Asha. Welcome to another episode on Hungry for Returns. And in this week's episode, we have kind of a tax related questions about how you can save some money tax wise um, on your trading. So I'll give you my best shot on this, but take a look and listen to the question and let's kind of get some insight on it. Hello, Sasha. My name is Chris and I have a question. Uh in relation to an individual that would be intending to invest their money or lightly trade their money here in the United States. Um, the question is whether or not it may be beneficial to form what we might consider an LLC or an S Corp or a C Corp or something of that sort in order to gain tax benefits. Um, Things such as writing off uh, educational expenses, computer equipment, office space, things like that. I just don't know if it's a beneficial thing or not, and I'm trying to reach out to somebody um, who might be able to give some thoughts on that. This question is relation is in relation to being here in the United States, and it is not in relation to what the IRS considers a professional trader. I am more specifically talking about someone who just intends to invest their monies or lightly trade them throughout the year, but yet make a, a nice uh, chunk of profit. Um, also, would it be beneficial to start a, a business that is nothing related to trading or investing, but yet throw those investing measures and trading measures underneath that bi business for tax purposes? All right. Thank you, sir. Okay, so this one's, uh, I'm going to say right off the bat, it's more difficult for me to answer because number one, I'm not a tax expert. I don't know your tax situation. So for anybody that is a tax professional, feel free to leave additional comments in the description below. Um, so I'm going to do my best shot to kind of answer this question based on future consultation or past consultations I've had with tax professionals on this subject and kind of how I structured my own personal life around it. Uh, but again, spend a hundred bucks, a couple hundred bucks, talk to a tax expert for your sp specific situation. Cause again, I'm not a tax expert and those tax laws do change quite often. So that's my disclaimer and spiel. So let's kind of get an insight on, um, what we were talking about here and I want to go to the screen there's a couple things regarding this there is a uh, I believe Chris Chris it was that mentioned that there is a uh, professional tax trader status that you could get if you're trying to really deduct the whole the whole big picture is really we're trying to deduct money from things we use in trading computer uh, educational expenses so that way we pay the government a lot less thinking of this like a business the government doesn't recognize trading as a business they look at it as investing but you can get trader status which is a little more difficult to get um, you know so you basically have to there you know you can read about it you have to apply for it and even then it, it's difficult to apply for it I found one of the better benefits especially if you trade options uh, there's a 1256 tax code in it where 60% of your um, uh, trades are counted as long term, even if they're five minutes, two minutes, and 40% short term capital gains tax, which you can read much more about on other links. So again, 1256 is the rule. Look at it. It has to be traded like uh, futures types of contracts or uh, e um, not ETFs like the SPY, but it could be like the SPX or the RUT. So they look at this as um, a lot of tax savings. And again, uh, read more about that if you want to learn. And again, talk to your tax professional. So anyways, uh, you could go ahead and set up a, let me go to the, to the board here. So the whole point, I guess, what we're trying to do is normally, if you look at an individual uh, or a person, what they do is you go ahead and you make your money and then you go ahead and you pay uh, the government some sort of, of uh, money from your taxes. So this is the taxes that you pay. Now, what he was talking about was why don't we create kind of a, a S Corp or an LLC so that way we could go ahead and, you know, deduct, well, let's say here, a computer. This could be education, uh, courses, that kind of stuff. 
Um, and that way it looks like we make less. Because all the government's really doing is the amount of money you're making. Okay, so let's say you're making uh, 50,000 a year and you deduct kind of 20,000 on expenses. Well, you know, in simple form, you're paying taxes on 30,000. And that's what they kind of get. And what happens here with an S Corp or LLC, you could go ahead and set one up like that and then trade under it. But remember the S Corp or LLC, you still have to distribute your earnings. So if we look kind of at um, TD Ameritrade, you could go ahead and open up corporate accounts. So there's many more type of specialty accounts on here. I think they're under specialty accounts. So if you look at it, there's a limited uh, liability here account. Uh, there is a limited partnership account. Uh, there's a corporate profit and nonprofit account. So again, legal entity for corporate. So that's kind of what we're talking about and looking at it. The thing is, is what you have to remember is that the double taxation problem here. And this is just from my personal knowledge. Again, if talk to a, your tax expert, talk to your accountant. I could be completely wrong on this. Uh, but from here, what happens is, is you go ahead and the corporation pays taxes to the government, right? So you're paying to the government. And then what happens is you also have to go ahead and pay money to yourself. And then you pay again to the government from those distributions. So this was kind of in the past what happens um, with this type of situation and this type of, of plan. So you're paying almost in a way a, a double form. So if you look at it, the way that I approached it was I looked at an overlapping business uh, because when I first started, I couldn't really get trader status because when you're just brand new you're not trading a lot and especially if you're doing light trading let's say you want to trade quite a bit um, well the easiest approach would to do and and this is kind of your business in trading the easiest approach is of course you could start let's say a daycare business that's not even involved in trading but they have some overlap right so you still have maybe uh, computers uh, paper that's still used so okay you, it still overlaps a little bit but if you go ahead and do let's say a trading educational business all of a sudden that overlaps much more and now okay well anything that you use for education well that is education that helps this secondary business or um, you know anything that computer related anything you know hey uh, if your phone related to run that business well you could also use to make trades so the more that you overlap the more that you can obviously deduct I don't know if it's worth it in your own personal situation to set that up because oftentimes for even the setup work remember when you're setting up an LLC or an S Corp and you have this payroll problem you got payroll that you also have to run that also costs, I don't know, let's just say $100 per employee per month. So for you, if you're an individual, let's just say 100 If you do somewhere cheaper or you do it yourself, maybe it costs you 30 bucks. So there's additional paperwork and documents you have to do. Not to mention, now you have two tax forms uh, that you have to do. One for the S-Corp, one for your uh, individual. So uh, you have that additional uh document that you have to do um, just to file the taxes. So there, there's more involved than just looking at the percentage of return. But of course, if, if trading is your kind of full-time, that's a different story. If you're just looking to do it kind of part-time, I wouldn't think of taxes as a major thought process. But if you do want to think about it in mind, I would say the better alternative is to kind of overlap it with a business that makes sense in your own personal life again i'm not an expert on this i i don't study the tax laws that much this is just certain things that i've learned over the years 
you know, you got to run payroll in the United States if you're if you're running a, a business and it's kind of successful in making money, right? Because that, that's the whole thing. That's the whole point. Otherwise, why have a business? Um, you could start two or three businesses. You could start four or five businesses. But once you start growing these things, it becomes more complicated, right? So the same thing, if you create a business just to be able to deduct things, is it worth it to run payroll? Is it worth it to you know, have that additional tax form? Is it worth it to stay in compliance to be able to go ahead and reconcile your sheets, uh, meaning all your bank statements uh, for that business? Uh, so again, um, you have to think about those things. And I would say <clears throat> just paying someone a hundred bucks, your tax professional uh, might be worthwhile. I think the first few years of trading, it's not worth it. Um, but, you know, uh, you got to figure it out on your own personal needs because everybody's situation is different. And, you know, the taxes, the way that they work, they're, they're very complicated. So if you look at, you know, S uh, Corp paying taxes, you know, you're not paying um, uh, the same amount of taxes as you would as an individual because they pay things a little bit differently. So how are S-Corps taxed? So you have to think about this and the LLCs versus S-Corp. Are you doing a partnership? So there's there's so many different things. There's no self-employment tax, right? The big benefit to S-Corp is that S-Corp sh shareholders do not have to pay a self-employment tax. So you don't have to pay tax on that part. Um, but there's other problems that could arise so anyways i think this question is just more in depth than what i can answer it i think the simple approach for most people is to not go that far into thinking about it or making a huge decision just on the tax implications because those tax laws do change if you're really thinking about taxes and you're trading a lot the 1256 rule has been used a lot through the options uh traders world because they get to save the, the shorter term trading uh, quite a bit. Uh, you could split accounts uh, into different things. Um, that's typically a savings. So if you're looking for like a retirement account, um, you know, versus a standard account, that also does help. Uh, but otherwise, just to create a business around it, I think that's getting really involved into it. And you really got to know and understand the tax laws. And for me, I got to just say, hey, I don't know. The advice I might have just given you may not be the smartest approach. So just pretend I'm an idiot and go ahead and talk to your uh, tax advisor, tax professional, spend a hundred bucks and get a real answer and con consult with that. Because uh, you're gonna, if you're going to spend you know, 10, 20 hours setting up a business and reconciling your sheets, uh, your, your bank statements, if you're going to be putting in paperwork with your state to, to register this as a business, it's worth it to spend an hour with a tax professional looking and digging deeper into your own personal situation, how much you're looking to spend, what's your current income, what's your current trading income, um, and all that kind of good stuff. So that's what I would recommend. Spend the time with a real tax professional that's focused on you and um, gives you a one-on-one -on -one personal session. Anyways, um, it's one of the uh, few questions that I can't really answer in depth as much as I would love because I'd love to know more about this subject and, uh, but there's just so many more things I'd love to learn in life. So thank you so much for joining me. Hope it was kind of gave you some insight and direction to think about like the 1256 rule, like the different, uh, retirement accounts or an overlapping business. I found that was the simplest approach because if you have an overlapping business, it's all just about writing things on paper. How do you see those things written out on paper? That's really what the government's looking at. And if you write it one way versus another, well, then that's how it goes. So anyways, thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube or, of course, join me on the newsletter list or ask your own question at the tradersfly.com website. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.